Well, good evening, everybody. What a privilege, what a blessing it is to be here with you. Welcome to a first of its kind, courtesy of the Nedbank Cape Winemakers Guild. Tonight I'm joined by you, our viewers, as well as our panel of experts to take us on this journey and I'd love to introduce them to you. First up, Kenza Ninovanda. She's the Nedbank Group Executive for Marketing and Corporate Affairs. She's a phenomenal woman. Her marketing career spans over 18 years and she's worked across several local and multinational organizations. Kenzie is super passionate about brands, especially purpose-led brands, and embody that purpose in everything that they do. She's incredible, and we are privileged to be here with you, Kenzani. Next up, Tabile Kele. She is a Cape Winemakers Guild protege. So Tabile started the protege program at Hartenberg Estate before joining Milanu and Liu, where she will be staying on for the 2022 season to be mentored by Andrea Milanu. We are super proud of you, Tabile, and grateful to have you here. Talking about Andrea Moulinieu, she's our next panelist. She's the co-owner and winemaker of Moulinieu and Liu with Family Wines, and she is also an award-winning winemaker of Moulinieu and Liu Family Wines out in Swartland, who is one of five women to be inducted into the Cape Winemakers Guild since its inception in 1982. And in December, she wrapped up a successful run as chairwoman. We are so proud of you, Andrea, and grateful to be in your presence. Next up, we have Nicolas van Rienen. He is an audio producer and a music composer, a multi-instrumentalist and co-founder of a really cool studio called Field Audio. And they put sound to picture, specializing in music composition and sound design for commercials, films and audio visual. And I, for one, cannot wait to hear more from you, Nick. Great to be with you, man. And last but not least, Mark Drummond, a neural sense co-founder. Mark has over a decade of experience working in the advertising and marketing space. As one of the co-founders of NeuroSense, a neuromarketing company that conducts neuroscience-driven marketing research using brain monitoring, eye tracking, and biometric technologies, he has a lot to share about our fascinating emotional and cognitive processes. Now, as a musician, one of the things that I've experienced firsthand is how music is truly a universal language. But did you know, my friends, that now it's a proven fact that the right song, together with the right wine, can make for the ultimate tasting experience. And that's exactly why we're here tonight. We're here to celebrate and we're here to witness something truly amazing. Because five protégés from the Cape Winemakers Guild, a composer and some neuroscientists got into a room to collaborate and to create scientifically a piece of music that literally pairs with any glass of Cabernet Sauvignon. Scientifically using music notes to enhance the tasting notes. If that doesn't sound wild, I don't know what does. Now due to the pandemic, the wine industry took a huge knock and Ned Bank is very passionate about what they do and very passionate about the wine industry. And as a long-term supporter of wine, they got together with the Cape Winemakers Guild to create something that would completely revolutionize the way we experience wine. The result, tasting notes. My friends, this is the ultimate tasting experience. Passion mashup, as well as a new accessible way for us to enjoy our wine. And of course, don't forget to engage with us online. We are here with you and we wanna feel your presence. So drop us messages online at NedBank on all social media platforms. And the official hashtag for tonight is NedBankCWG. Everyone enjoys music and we already know that the wine experience is elevated when listening to a piece of music that you love. We set out to create the ultimate passion pair-up. Could we literally use music notes to enhance the tasting notes of wine? Welcome to New York. You can go ahead and take a seat here. So what the EEG does is it picks up that electrical activity. And today we specifically are interested in your emotional engagement and how you feel and respond to a glass of wine. We selected five wine protégés from the Nedbank Cape Winemakers Guild to take part in today's experiment. Our challenge is very much a creative one. How do we take people's subconscious experience of a wine and transcend that into data that can form the creation of a piece of music? 
We tasted some wines blind to give each wine a fair chance. I think Cabernet Sauvignon is quite a well-known cultivar. Some good red fruits coming through, hints of sour cherry. So today we've really measured every aspect of the wine tasting experience, from the first nose of the wine to the final sip. So from here we're going to take the ones and zeros and we're going to move into a very creative process. The protégé has talked about the earthiness of the wine and this may possibly serve as a great texture for the score. Going into this experiment, we asked the respondents to give us a personal account of their experience of the flavor. There's certain frequencies that correlate to certain flavor profiles. If we think about the five flavors, salty, sweet, savory, sour, and bitter. It's interesting how the crystal glasses have a completely different resonant frequency to the glass ones. Could one compose a piece of music which could heighten certain characteristics in a wine and add to the nuances of its flavor? Empty crystal glass, take one. Yeah, I like that one a lot more. So we've received the analysis from NeuralSense and this provides us with a narrative map that we have used. Instead of thinking about it in terms of one sip, we're thinking about it in terms of the length of a glass of wine from start to finish. What we've done in studio is we've recorded some wine glasses, the opening of the wine. We're going to be taking all the samples that we record and then converting it into a playable instrument. And since this is a cab sub and it's quite like full bodied, a lot of the piece of music is going to be happening in this kind of nicely rounded, range of instruments. What we'll hopefully create is the ultimate tasting experience and passion mashup, and in so doing, create a new way of engaging with wine. Today is probably one of the most exciting parts of the whole process is we're actually testing the music with real world consumers. That music enables you to receive the wine that you are drinking in a different way without you being even aware of that. The flavour was, was definitely more enhanced. I think that the song goes perfectly well with the wine. Welcome today, my name is Belinda and I'm going to be conducting the neuromarketing study. I'm going to put the headset on you. The aim today is to figure out what your emotional response is to a stimulus. And today's stimulus is a wine tasting experience. I'm not gonna lie, I am so intrigued. I'm so excited after watching that video for what we're about to do today. And I think without further ado, I would love to unpack the process with you guys. Mark, this is maybe less about the wine, but more about the science mm -hmm. behind it all. Can you take me through the science behind making the song? Sure, well, before we had to um, unpack the song, we had to understand how people experienced the wine itself. So for that, we enlisted the help of fine, five uh, wine protégés mm. um, from the Nedbank Cape Wine Makers Guild to sit in our office. And essentially, we hooked them up to a bunch of equipment, um, brain monitoring devices. So uh -huh. we measured their brain waves as they tasted and experienced the wine, as well as something called a galvanic skin response, which measured their level of emotional arousal over time. And we took that data together with their own kind of self-reported experience and expert opinion on the wine and transferred that into a map sort of we mapped out the journey of the wine from the first nose to the final sip. Um, and then we took that data and handed it over to Nick and his team, uh, the music experts, to then translate that into a musical experience to elevate the tasting notes and the flavor profiles of the wine itself. Sure, sounds incredible. Curious, just while you were speaking, I was wondering, do you guys do those lying detector stuff as well? We do. <laughs> the Gavanis can respond. That's exactly what the okay, GSR okay, is. No, it's a lying detector. Amazing, amazing. one device, I, I can't take her. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. You know, when I, when I heard about the concept and I heard about the ambition that, that you guys were on, I was so curious and I wish I could have been a fly on the wall inside the studio just to kind of be with you and, and see how you guys were taking the information and kind of interpreting that into sound. Yeah. Can you take me through that journey, man? Sure. Well, we were sipping wine a lot of the time. <laughs> I can imagine, of course. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I guess the journey all started when the NetBank Cape Winemakers Guild got in touch and um, sort of came up with this ambitious project of like, can we translate the flavor of wine somehow into, into sound? Mm. Um, and yeah, and Mark explains very well like how the science the sci scientific component of, of this research that we did. Mm. Um, yeah, and we also found some older research that sort of suggested that there are potential correlations between flavors and sounds and certain tones and uh, pitches. Sure. Mm. So sweetness is sort of high-pitched sounds. Yeah. Okay. Um, going down in a sort of uh, spectrum all the way down to bitterness, which is quite low sounds. Okay. So mapping those flavors um, across the keyboard essentially like gave us an interesting kind of pitched parameter for uh, creating the piece of music. And then along with this kind of narrative arc that was stitched mm. together with all the neural data, um, mm. we were able to sort of coax the data into something that I think is quite beautiful and really gets you to focus on the experience of drinking wine. Mm of the experience that you're busy having in your mouth. And it's somehow being, I think of it like a trampoline being double bounced. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the one, the one sense is bouncing once, but then the other sense is double bouncing it and it's like shooting all around. Wow. <laughs> so I feel like the, the sensation of drinking the glass of wine is, is, is enhanced quite a bit by just merely focusing on it mm. so intentionally. But then the music is also kind of, guiding you as to what to look for, in a sense. Sure. And instrument-wise, were there like certain sounds or instruments that you can remember using that kind of just had the right sort of vibe? Like, I'm thinking strings, I'm thinking, were there horns? What kind of instrumentation? Well, we actually went into, um, we went to the wine farm and sourced a bunch of sounds from there. Wow. Yeah, which was really interesting. <laughs> There's, I mean, you can imagine all those like empty oak barrels and those huge like, uh, not sure what they're made of, steel vat, mm, mm. which make this incredible like resonant gong sound that like shakes your whole body. And you'll hear some of that in the, wow. in the piece of music later. Um, and yeah, used wine glasses with different sticks and sure. mallets. And, That's incredible, man. Yeah, and got some really interesting sounds actually out of the, you know, the, the, the world of wine. Sure. Um, and the only additional instruments we used uh, was... I think it was just piano. Oh wow! Man. So everything else you hear in the piece so of music everything is everything recorded and sampled in, and is and sampled, yeah, wow. basically off of like the winemaking process. That's amazing! I can't wait to hear it, man. I'm not gonna lie, I can't wait <laughs> to have the experience and just <laughs> get lost in this thing. And I think you mentioned something that's quite key, and I think we're speaking a lot about it. And it's you know we're talking about uh, studying the brain, and I think just being present, being in the moment, and enjoying that moment. I think that already does such a huge difference um, to any experience. And I, I want to encourage everybody that's going to do this today and and be and that is joining us online is just to kind of be present mm. be here in the moment and just take everything in mm. before we get into the why because that's always an interesting question i mean why why would we want to do this i want to encourage everybody that's online to shoot your comments into the comments section and if you've got any questions for our incredible panelists then i will get to ask those questions later on and don't forget to continue interacting with us hashtag nedbank cwg and at nedbank on all social media platforms andrea and tabile as wine experts right what was your experience doing the tasting with the final music piece and the tasting notes cabernet sauvignon okay i'll i'll go first on that one um yeah i mean there's so many ways to experience wine and wine is a product that is a combination of science and art mm. um and so when you take those concepts when you're tasting wine you know some people appreciate sometimes having those physical notes in front of them, telling them what they're supposed to taste because it helps with the educational experience. Um, some people love the wine and food pairing where they're looking on a um, organoleptic uh, level what works together. Um, but those are very subjective things. What works for mm. me might not work for you. And what I loved about this project was that you know, it took um, the scientific measurements and readings and applied that to create a structure on which the music was built. And so you're taking then again science and art, putting it together, and then 
having a tasting experience with wine, which is science and art. So you're adding in additional senses. You're, it heightened the experience. Um, everything was elevated, and I think that's what was so fascinating about it. Wow. And Tabile, how was your experience? Um, look, I first tasted the wine without the music, and it was an incredible um, wine, which is a great um, expression of the Stellenbosch Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. And then I tasted the wine with the music now playing on the background, and um, it was so amazing how it changed the experience, the wine tasting experience, because it was so amazing, and it, it's like taking it to the next level to see how much um, or how can our sensory and mm. um, reaction to the wine actually can be transformed into music, which made like really more sense. And wow. It was incredible. Well, I'm, I loved I'm it. very jealous that you all have had the experience, <laughs> but I can't wait to have the experience with you guys, and I can't wait to experience the emotion that, it, that you guys got. Um, Kenzani. Uh, tell, tell us about the story of where this initiative came from. Is it, is it something different for a bank to get involved in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, Jay, we've, we've been partners with the, with the CWG for over 30 years, and they're a fantastic partner for us. And the reason we partner with them is, one, it's about really raising the quality of wine in South Africa. Mm. And two, I believe doing that really positions us as a country globally. Um, because I think from a growth of the GDP perspective, yeah. I think wine can be quite a powerful industry in really positioning you know, our country. And in the last two years, given the difficulties that the wine industry had, we felt like we needed to do something that would give a little bit of like, you know, possess much mm. more than, you know, wine has. And, you know, this for me, this idea just felt like it could really bring some interest into the industry that hopefully, and I think the industry is back in a lot of ways, but yeah. hopefully continues to catapult it. Yeah, so I, I, I have this vision of like, I, I don't, like I'm going to do it at home. It's just like, it's so intimidating sometimes to bring your friends together and say, let's do a wine tasting at home. <laughs> <laughs> like, you need to have like an expert like you guys. But I think now, all of a sudden, everybody at home can do a fantastic experience. And I think we all after those moments at home, in the comfort of our homes, and I can see friends getting together, Absolutely. going on Apple and Spotify, mm. getting the song and actually doing this with their friends, which is what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, but just, you know, I just wanted to say it's, one of the things that I, I appreciate about you from a marketing perspective is that you're constantly doing things that are purpose-led. That it's like your net bank, I feel like, has their heart on their sleeve mm. and they support and do things. You don't talk too much, but you just do. And I appreciate that about you. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Tabule, now you were part of the Cape Winemakers Guild pro, um, program. And, um, and I think it's, it's so cool to see young people come through and be so passionate about wine and have so much knowledge around wine. And I'm sure that the program, like you mentioned, is, is everything that it is and more. But can you tell us, do you think that the program itself um, can attract younger you know, winemakers into the industry? Oh, definitely. I mean, why not? Because looking at it, you get to... Um, get a, like a step in between the university life where you just learn everything mm. theoretically and you do a little bit of practical, obviously, but if you get a step in between, who wouldn't want to take that step between the university life and the working industry? Because those who are completely different places, yes. I mean, you get to see things that you never knew they existed in the work industry. And I mean, who wouldn't want to take a step and have someone who guide, to guides them yeah. swimming into the pool rather than being thrown in a deep end and have to swim with the big sharks. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <why not>? <laughs> <laughs> the big sharks. I love that. Yeah, I, I'm, I've tried to live that experience of what the, the program must be about. I mean, it's like, you know, being passionate about music and then getting to be mentored by the top musicians in the country. Mm. It must be wild. So I can only imagine. Andrea, as a member of, of CWG, why did, you get, why did you decide to get involved in this research? So the members of the Cape Winemakers Guild are considered the, some of the top winemakers in the country. Um, and we're invited in based on a track record of making wines of excellence over an extended period of time. Um, and we have to do that in conjunction with you know, moving with the times mm. of the world always considering um, you know, the three pillars of sustainability. So you know, 
um, economic, environmental, and social. Um, and in the last couple of years, as we've all experienced, you know, with pandemic and global warming and a lot of the social changes that are happening around the world, mm. we have to think on our toes. We have to be innovative um, so that we can keep up and still make wines of excellence, but with that balance. And to maintain that excellence, you know, initiatives like this are just absolutely perfect. So it was taking, um, you know, the, the top people in the field in the country combined with the top future winemakers, mm -hmm. um, the most famous variety in the world, Cabernet Sauvignon, was used as, as the, the lens through which this mm -hmm. project would be tasted, <laughs> and, um, and then combined with um, Stellenbosch, you know, we are sitting here in Stellenbosch, you know, one of the most beautiful wine regions in the world, and the best place to grow Cabernet Sauvignon um, in the country, so it's combining all of those things, and you can't end up with anything but an excellent product. Yeah, that's so true. Huh? So that's exactly why, you know, when, when the Cape Winemakers Guild stands for excellence, this is the kind of project we want to be involved with. Yeah, I, you know, as soon as they gave me a call to see if I wanted to be here uh, as a host and they mentioned wine and music, I was like, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be there because that, that is incredible. And I think it's, it's, it sounds so, I don't want to say cheesy, but like wine and music make for a phenomenal moment. And, uh, and I would have been, you know, my hands up <laughs> straight away. Can I be part of the research? You know, so very proud of you guys again. Tabulip. We're speaking about, uh, I've spoken to you already about a younger audience, but do you think a passion matchup of this nature has the potential to get a younger audience interested in wine? Yes, definitely. I mean, look, everyone understands music at a different level and everyone understands music. It has, you have mm. to understand music in a way. <laughs> so imagine if wine is involved. More young people yeah. are invited there. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I, I can't wait to, to you know, after, after, the, uh, after tonight's proceedings, just to like, one of the things that I'm thinking about, and it's not a question, I'm just mentioning it because it's on my mind, it's just understanding. I wonder if the research that you guys understood could be applied to commercial music mm. to then be able to make a Mikasa song with this understanding so that when we performing, could it be, you know, touching people in these in the ways that you guys have taken so very intrigued we'll talk later yes we'll talk, we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> some tips for my next songwriting session <laughs> Kenzani, why is it important for ned bank to be involved in something like this Firstly, Jay, if you do do a song, I feel like you must just give it to us for free. Right? <laughs> <laughs> because you would have gotten the idea yeah. from the... <laughs> I'm trying to steal the most. <laughs> but you know, one of the things I love about the CWG partnership is actually the Protégé program. For mm -hmm. me, if I look at Tawila sitting next to me talking yeah. so articulately about wine, sure. I actually have the feels, mm -hmm. right? Because this is actually what this program is about. The Protégé program is we take 10 young people every year who get to actually interact with the top winemakers. As Andrea said, like the, the CWG winemakers, you get asked to be part of the guild, and they're, they're some of the top winemakers in the country. If I was interested in being a winemaker, this is the program that I would want to be on. So for them mm -hmm. to have this opportunity, I think is incredible. I mean, secondly, for us, we do want to see transformation in the wine industry. So again, we want these young people to be much more representative of the country that we live in. And for me, sitting here as NetBank, where our purpose is to use our financial expertise to do good, mm -hmm. to know that there's a young black lady who's going to do a wine tasting just says to me that this is the type of things that we want to be involved in because we want to make an impact in this country. Sure. I know. I'm speechless. <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's so evident. Your passion is so evident and, and you carry such an incredible company on, on your shoulders now, but just so evident. And, and again, like just so proud of you and so proud of the program for what it's doing. Absolutely. And I, I really think we should work on a music guild, you know, just <laughs> for the same, you know, same procedure uh, while we're here, you know, while we're yeah, at the wine for your music. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get started on the wine tasting, I want to encourage everybody to make sure that they've got their tasting notes ready or your Cabernet Sauvignon ready. And um, we're going to now, um, Tabile, we're going to ask you to take our guests through the experience, but we're going to do so without music. Okay. Hey. So if you can tell us about the experience and tell us a little bit more about the wine that we've selected. Okay, great. Um, so Cabernet Sauvignon is uh, the king of grape varieties, mm. all of them. Um, and it is the 
dominating um, variety that of the red varieties planted in South Africa. And um, the best is grown in Stellenbosch. Um, so we were so privileged to work with this vineyard of um, Cabernet Sauvignon and um, to make this wine. So it was a great privilege for mm. us working with the best people or the top people in the wine industry and with the best vineyards located yeah. in the most beautiful um, wine land. Sure. So, and what are some of the tasting things that come through in this particular wine? Is it a fruity um, wine? Is it... We don't have fruity wines. <laughs> we we get fruit-driven wines. Scoot. We learned early on, yeah. like sour is bad. Okay, okay, right. Right. You don't describe wine as sour or sweet. Or, no, uh, no. <laughs> I enjoy being scoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, with um, Cabernet Sauvignon, you get it to have, a, it has a lot of uh, black fruits, um, your black currant, your pl uh, plummy fruits, mm. and um, it enhanced with the underlying um, spicy notes that you get in it with um, cigar wood, which <laughs> is incredible <laughs> with the taste. And then you get, um, the structure is, really layered and impact uh, um, a complex structure enhanced with um, a velvety mouth mouth-watering tannins mm. um, ah you're yeah, a poet man you <laughs> <laughs> with a great refreshing acidity so sure. mm -hmm. is it your favorite wine one, one of my one favorite. Of the favorites. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, that's fair. All right, everybody. So I'm going to ask everybody to get ready to get your wine. Make sure that's in the glass. And without further ado, please can everybody put on their headphones and let's go on this tasting journey together.
I am, I'm not even going to lie. And actually, you know what? There's no point in trying to convince people. They must just go and do it for themselves because that's also what's cool about this is that people are going to be able to try it out for themselves in the comfort of their homes. But for me, what I felt, and I, it's maybe it's in my head, but it's just kind of the vibe that I got was almost just this dance that became so much more present in the moment it just felt like the wine was dancing more in my mouth it almost had a rhythm to kind of move to and that's kind of the feeling that i got is that as i started to kind of just put the two together i was getting almost this motion happening in my mouth and then the taste and the things going on so for me I, I i'm just so flabbergasted i don't know if that's the right word or blown away <laughs> i'm just like whoever you guys are amazing and um, and I'm Shucks. super sweet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stop it. <laughs> no, but for real, man. It's just uh, I I love your minds. I love <laughs> I love what you guys did. This deserves, you know, everybody's attention, and it deserves the awards, and it deserves everything else that's going to come with it. Um, and more than anything, I hope that it enhances and changes and revolutionizes the way that people experience wine. And I'm so grateful that you used music. Because that's what I'm about. You know? so, <laughs> and music is so, so powerful. Um, I, but, but that's my opinion, right? And, and we, we all had our own experience. And, and just so that you guys don't think that I'm just making this up, because I'm, I'm in the food business as well. So sometimes when you taste something on TV, you're like, hmm, it tastes nice. And sometimes it doesn't. But <laughs> <laughs> How now we know. But, <laughs> but now I'm going to bring some people in. We have got some beautiful guests that have, have been joining us tonight here on the wine farm. And I'm going to ask Leanne, I think it is, to join yes. us and, uh, and to come and see or, or, or mention you, uh, that I'm not lying. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, you look wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Leanne, I need, I need you to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Okay, 100%. And just to tell me about that experience. How was that experience? Do you know what I loved about it was it was quite noisy in that room with everyone talking. And when I put these headphones on, I just went into my own little world. Mm. And then how the music progressed, it kind of, yeah, the wine also progressed on my palate. And yeah. I thought, wow, the best part for me was the little raindrops towards the end. Sure. <laughs> that was great. Wow. You see awesome. guys, <laughs> tell you that. One, one last thing. How cool do you think it would be, or do you see yourself doing this at home with some friends? Oh, I'd love to do that. Imagine whipping out some headphones at home and saying, hey, right. I've got a special song to play for you guys. And let me know what you think when you taste the wine. Wow. Well, that's be cool. cool, man. I'm so glad you had a great experience. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Pleasure. Thank you for being a part of it. Very We've cool. got one more guest that's going to join us. And, um, and I'm going to bring him in. And uh, we're going to see how his experience was. <laughs> Hi, you brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Welcome to the to the VIP club. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm in the room. Welcome now. to the genius <laughs> the genius rooms we gathered here. Uh, bro, how was the experience for you? Well, it was super interesting because like from watching you guys explain it and then being in there and it started off at kind of like light and delicious and watery and then the bass kicked in mm. and you're like, whoa, the bitterness. And you're like, okay, and then it just ended off again in a light way with the music. So it was actually quite interesting when it's like, the louder it is, the sweetness, and the, mm -hmm. the lower it goes. It was like, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and again. <laughs> uh, and I also want to know, what, what do you think about the, what was your initial reaction, let me say, when, when you heard about the Ned Bank Cape Winemakers Guild idea of piecing music with wine? Well, it's something that, you're not really used to wine and music. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like when it's on the groove, it's always something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now it's like kind of like, whoa, this is actually something really, really cool. And you can do it in a setting where it's kind of like you have a conversation. You know? mm. It's not just anything mm. else. It's just more like it's a conversational type of drink. So it's like mm. something that you can actually like do it at home, like you said. You know, like I want to do it at home. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I'm totally, ready. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. So now you guys can see that I, you know, I'm being legit here. Everybody's had the same experience. <laughs> but again, we're going to encourage you guys to try it out at home again with your friends and family. Thank you so much for, for coming in. Thank you for being here. No, awesome. We appreciate Thank you. you. And, um, and we're now going to also just remind you guys that if you have any question for our panelists, then please drop them in the comments and I'm going to ask them these questions in a little while and um, and I'm so excited about the one thing is that we and, and I, you know with all due respect I love wine but we also are you know getting people to pay more attention to music mm -hmm. 
And I think that's super cool is that sometimes as a musician and as a, as a music maker, you know, you, I sometimes wish that like, could you just be quiet and just listen? Man? <laughs> <laughs> Please listen. That moment of like, yeah, listen to this part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and in my, in my world, you know, the music that I make, everybody's just like, ah, they're dancing. And I'm like, can you listen? Like, <laughs> yeah, I worked for like four hours yeah, on yeah, yeah. like sound. Exactly. Like, you... <laughs> Talking about that, how, how long, how many hours did you put in the studio to get this piece of music out? Um... I work quite quick, but I would say it, it, it took about a week to piece the whole thing sure. together because we were sort of piecing it together in quite an unconventional way. Mm. It's not like you can just like slam into the flow state and then like whack a song out with a verse and a chorus. It had to follow the development of the wine mm. throughout like, and try to get it as one-to-one -to, -one to, I suppose, my subjective experience and what the data says. Yeah. Um, Sure. In terms of what the arc needs to be, so it was yeah, it was a it was an interesting experience and like lots of roadblocks and like okay, no, actually, oh there, okay. <laughs> so it was a yeah, big lesson in massaging music. I also, <laughs> I, I also kind of like when I heard the song now and when I was having the experience, and I don't know if it was intentional and if it not if it wasn't then it's fine, but it also felt somewhat local. It felt somewhat South African. I don't know if it was those, those little perks that you put in there, but was that the intention? Was to give it a little bit of like a, I don't know, man. You know, this wine is from here. It's mm -hmm. from our country. We, we proudly South African. Yeah. Was that the yeah. intention? Well, I mean, I'm local. So yeah, yeah. I suppose <laughs> I can't escape it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to come through. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, we were very much trying to also, you know, capture a lot of where the wine was actually coming from, mm. like literally geographically pinpointing this wine farm. Um, sure. uh, you know, like, like the, the DNA of the space that was made is fully integrated into the piece of music. Mm. And I think sort of stylistically as well. Yeah. Yeah. So naturally it also comes out. But yeah. Jeez, I wonder if there's any questions from, from everybody else. Um, I'm seeing uh, somebody's popping up there with a screen. And, uh, and I see, Andrea, I wanted to ask you if, if there's any other plans to do other varietals and pair the music with it. That is an excellent question. Um, I think that this has opened the doors to... Uh, working with this further, um, but what I think is really fantastic is how the protégés took ownership of this project, mm. you know, from the beginning to the end. Um, you know, we were only there as mentors and, and guides, but it was the protégés who really took this by the reins and pulled it forward. Sure. Well, more, more varietals means more songs. <laughs> means that maybe I can get my feature. You know? Yeah, you, you did the next one. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't put all of that pressure on me. I'll just be there, you know, just to add the voice. <laughs> all right. Well, that, that was actually one of the questions from our... I just made it as if it was one of my questions. But it was one of our questions from our guests. And, um, and we're going to close up. And what an incredible experience that was. Um, thank you for your passion. As Ned Bank, thank you for your heart as Ned Bank. Thank you, thank you for being so purpose driven, and thank you for shaping the youth of tomorrow. And uh, and and proud of you on on your journey. And I want to wish you all the best on this next journey of yours at Milanu and Leo. And uh, super proud of you and everything that you're doing. Keep making incredible wine. Um, we're going to chat afterwards so I can learn how to make music better. <laughs> and tap into that neuroscience behind it all. Yeah. And to you, bro, just yeah, thank you for bringing that music side of things together and, and for interpreting so well. Um, and to everybody, thank you for being here. We value you. We appreciate you. The most valuable resource that we have in this life is time. And to get to share in some time with you guys is an absolute blessing. Don't forget to tell your friends that there's a new experience in town. And it is a music and wine pairing. It's the meeting of sound and wine. And you can experience it right in the comfort of your homes. And you can go and check it out on Ned Bank's YouTube page where you can see the video. Or you can even check it out on Apple and Spotify where you can actually download the song and get to do it with your friends and family at home, which is the first thing that I'm going to do when I get back home. So from me, from everybody here, lots and lots of love and light. And don't forget to keep sharing online your experience at NetBank on all social media platforms. And the official hashtag is NetBankCWG. Lots of love. Peace. <laughs>